Well, Gracie was a normal child until she got to be about 11 years old. And she started having these little periods of um, pain in her head and her stomach. We were calling them growing pains. You're just growing, it's just pain, you get over it. Um, and then as those increased in severity, you know, we realized we were dealing with something more complicated. So we went to visit our pediatrician and our pediatrician said, I think she's having abdominal migraines. And they started Gracie on a low dose of a seizure medication, but it was not a therapeutic dose for seizures. It was really to try to manage these abdominal migraines. I saw her very first seizure um, and it was very surreal because she started lifting her, her right hand up and it just started doing some convulsions and then she went into a grand mal seizure. And in hindsight, we really think that her growing pains were probably a focal type seizure, but you, we really didn't know at that time. Another time she had, we heard her have a seizure when she was upstairs. She had fallen and wedged herself against the door. So we couldn't get in there until the seizure was over. So we had to go up on our medication and get to a therapeutic level of seizure medication but we were never able to really get her under control. We went through every medication known for pediatrics in seizures, and still we could not get our seizures under control. So we went back in to see our neurologist afterwards, and he goes, um, well, you know, we haven't talked about surgery. The EEG, MEG, other non-invasive testing told us the source of her seizures. Our concern was that it was very close to the areas responsible for language function. So the non-invasive testing was, was critical in her to answer that question. Uh, after doing that, we thought we could remove the area that was causing the seizures without affecting her language function. Uh, we knew we had to do that because if we affected her language function, she wouldn't be the same girl. Grace would be different. Gracie had a list of her concerns and questions, and I had a list of my concerns and questions, and Dad had a list of his, and you know, Dad and I, our list kind of, you know, evolved, you know, what kind of function she was going to have afterwards and, and her IQ and, and that kind of thing and what kind of future she would have. And Grace's two questions were, one, am I going to be able to play the piano again? And then two, <clears throat> is it going to affect my personality at all? And uh, apparently that comes from a different side of the brain and now we're operating on the other side. So she goes, well, that's fine, let's do it. One of the bravest things I've ever seen a young person do, I think. When I woke up from the surgery, um, they, they asked me some of the postictal questions um, just to make sure that I was okay, to make sure there weren't any like brain malfunctions. And came out doing great. Um, she spent just 24 hours in the neuro ICU and then went back to the EMU and um, then eventually was discharged home. I felt so confident and I'm very, very secure and very hopeful. You know, that brought a lot of hope to us that, that uh, we hadn't had up until that moment, so that was great. Um, my piano playing, it, it didn't affect my abilities at all. So to hear her play and just to hear that again. That was incredible because we'd been, we'd been through so much and there were so many questions and doubts and that was a big moment.